Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. What we have happening in this video is um, we had just discovered, last time I recorded, which was actually about a week ago, um, we had just discovered uh, a cumulative rounding error, which I'd actually suspected from the beginning. I thought it was going to be from the floating point math, but it's actually from the, uh, the, <laughs> the workaround I you put in place to deal with the floating point math, which just once again illustrates the need to check your work. Uh, Test-driven development, once again, can confirm that you programmed what you thought you programmed, but it can't confirm that you, what you thought you should program was actually the right thing. So uh, what we have here is my spreadsheet showing the most likely correct results, my previous assumptions, and the results from the, uh, the software we've written. Um, and they don't match, and uh, we need to fix that. So we have two issues here. One is our interest rate is truncating integers, uh, throwing away all those pennies, which is causing a fairly significant error over time. Uh, and then something that's not showing up this spreadsheet is that when we withdraw, we're going to have um, less, uh, well, I imagine something's going on with our taxable gains as well. So because we're not withdrawing, we're not incurring any capital gains tax, but I think that would cause a problem as well. So we really need to uh, deal with that. So first thing I want to do is, I think I want to write a little test to demonstrate that this error is occurring. So let's go ahead and pull up Eclipse, and we're going to go into Stock Market. Oops, that's the wrong one. Stock Market is really where the, the class that represents this. The stock market represents all the years together. So I think a test here um, would be appropriate. So that's the rule, of course. When you find a bug, um, write a test to reproduce the bug and then fix it. And this is actually going to be kind of interesting because we've got multiple steps here. So uh, first we want to say no cumulative rounding error. Uh, due to interest and in interest calculations. And I'll just grab all of that. And let's assert that our, let's just assert on our final ending balance should be 497,852. Okay, and that should fail. It does, and it fails for exactly the right reason. We expected 497852 was 497690. Great, so now we've reproduced the error. Um, and now that we've done that, I'm actually going to... Um, I'm going to put this test aside, because this test is actually too big for... Uh, it, it's it's too big to solve. I think the actual root cause of this problem is way down inside of interest rate. Uh, right here, in interest on, we're converting the dollars to an integer, multiplying by the interest rate, getting some pennies, and then throwing them away when we convert back to an int. And this gets back to the problem that I didn't solve when I was working on dollars, which was that... Um, I didn't want to expose the dollars, the underlying variable of the dollars, but I couldn't figure out how to do it in a way that would still be clean, allow me to do this here, and particularly allow me to do the compound tax cleanly here. So um, I, I don't know exactly how I want to deal with that just yet, but really what I need to do is I need to not expose the integer. 
So I don't know what I'm going to do about the compound tax. I'm going to set that aside for a moment and just solve the problem of the simple percentage. And I think the way to do that is by writing some code around um, having, I think dollars having a percentage method will solve it. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to put this aside, uh, kill this. Yeah. Okay, so let's introduce a percentage method. And I, with, with, with the goal of getting rid of $2int entirely. So let's, oh, you know what? Somebody asked me a, a while back, and I just hadn't had a chance to do it. Somebody asked me to increase the font size so that this would show up better on, uh, on your iPhones and so forth. I'm going to pause the video for a moment and do that. Okay, I'm back. Uh, hopefully this is a little more readable for all of you out there. Uh, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know how it works out for you. So um, what we want to do, yeah, I think a percentage method will be nice. And the reason I'm doing this is because what this will allow me to do is change the underlying value, the type of the dollars object, and have everything just sort of magically work from that point forward. If I take this out, then I can change this all I want. I think I'm going to start out with just having this be a double. And um, in the future, maybe I'll do that fixed point math. I think I've been obsessing a little bit about the fixed point math. That's not the important thing here. If I'm comparing to my spreadsheet, I'm pretty sure it just uses floating point math. Um, the real issue is that I'm throwing away my pennies, and that does have a long-term cumulative effect. So let's go ahead and put in our percentage. So just real simple. Okay, there's a failure. It should be pretty easy to do. Now I'm taking this in two steps. One is introducing this percentage concept, and the second is going to be to actually eliminate the rounding error. But now that I have this, I should be able to just say return a um, Mount should be able to just say return amount dot percentage. I have no idea if I'm using these domain terms properly. Hmm. Well, I think so. Hopefully, you guys will tell me if I'm not.
Well, that's interesting. Um, I wonder what's going on here. I've had a few people comment that they're yelling at the screen during these videos, and I apologize. It's just, uh, if you've ever pair programmed, you've seen this, it's so much easier to see a problem when you're not the one actually programming it. It's really amazing. Um, so I'd like you to, <laughs> I would like you to believe I'm not as stupid as I look, um, but I don't expect you to actually believe that. Okay, so what is going on here? Um, yeah, that percent may not be what I think it is. Yeah, it's already been divided, that's why. Okay. Well, let's just re-multiply it by now, for now. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's see. Well, obviously, Okay, there we go. So now, um, now our interest rate is using dollars directly, and everything's okay. Something just doesn't feel right about this to me, but I can't put my finger on it. Okay, well, I think that's right for now. Um, now we have the interesting question of, uh, or do we? Well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do something a little less normal. So if we took, for example, um, what would be if we took 50% of 9, what, what amount should that be? Well, for now, it's going to be 4 because we're just truncating. And that should work. But I think that illustrates what we need, the issue that we have here. Do we have that note? Yeah, so we need to convert dollars to use. Uh, to have pennies. I think I'll just do that with doubles for now. Anyway, um, this episode seems to have gone by really quickly without a whole lot getting accomplished, but uh, that brings us to the end, so thanks for watching, and tomorrow we'll get more done. So I will see you next time.